You're gonna need to have a reservation for your Halloween Horror Nights ticket. I just wish more content creators would speak up. Be ready. Talk about the Halloween Horror Nights original house. Okay guys, we're back in Universal Studios, Florida. It is time for another Halloween Horror Nights 2024 update. We're gonna be finally talking about some of the original houses. Will Hannibal Lecter finally be getting a house for HHN 33? There's also some more little hidden HHN Easter eggs we're gonna be talking about connecting with like the original house. HHN Shirt of the Day is one of my favorite shirts I think ever designed. Yeah, the Terror Tram from last year, from Hollywood. So on that note, Let's roll the commercial. Trust me, I can't wait for you to see this. <laughs> hey, I gotta go. I'll see you on the other side. Are you tired of humans? Are you sick of being stepped on, squashed, swatted, and sprayed? Is this guy for real? Then call. Oh, the number one human Did you know 90% of all my forces on this planet are in six? We outnumber humans a billion to one. Humans don't stand a chance. You'll be dropping like flies. Terror Tram, the Exterminators. Only at Universal's Halloween Horror Nights. Okay, welcome back. Let's head in. Only a couple more days left of Mardi Gras. All right, first bit of news is gonna be about Cabby. So there's some bad news about what's going on with Cabby. Oh my God, it is busy. Kangen Kodos is 50 minutes. Men in Black is 40. Race through New York with Jimmy Fallon was an hour. Transformers is a 75 minute wait. Green Gods at 110. Hogwarts Express, 70. Minions, Villain Con was 35. E.T. is 50. Fast and Furious is a one hour wait. You know we gotta hop into Five of Dime first thing. So the monster makeover has ended. Um, they've taken down all signage. They still have the chair for Creature and then a Creature shirt. And then over here, you're gonna have a shirt you know, for Frankenstein's monster. And then the monster chair. They have one new reward poster for sale, but that's about it. But the little boo has sold. If you were to go back in time and write a note in your high school yearbook, what would you want to say to yourself? Oh my goodness. Be ready to wear yellow. So first off, when you guys sent me a message a long time ago saying that, like your cousin worked at Universal Studios Hollywood, the rumored IP house, because there's one that we still don't know on the speculation map, was for Hannibal. But then another one of you guys sent me a message of an Easter egg within the tribute store, which connects. Okay, we're heading to the tribute store. Now again, the teams always kind of leave breadcrumbs to upcoming houses, but there's one staring us straight in the face the entire time. On this sign here, but we'll get a better look when we come in here. Here we go. Welcome aboard the PS Songbird, the most luxurious paddle steamer the South has ever seen. Built by the best for the best. Enjoy your journey along the Grand Mississippi River, New Orleans to Hannibal. Hannibal, Hannibal Lecter, Universal Studios actually owns Hannibal. When you're on the tram tour, they have a poster for Hannibal. We've never actually had a Hannibal Lecter house. We've had Hannibal pop up, I believe, in the Bill and Ted show. And then also he popped up within one house, but he's never had his own house. Could we be actually be getting a Hannibal house this year? If you come over here to the paper, you know, we already talked about the cards and everything. But what's the first thing right there? Lamb, right? For Silence of the Lamb. Now, a lot of the Mardi Gras merch is starting to go on sale. So if there's something that you're really looking for, right now it's 30% off. It'll get even more drastically discounted uh, the closer it gets to April 7th. The clue for the original house that we'll be talking about is in this final room. Now, they are doing surveys with everyone right now, asking them about their thoughts about the tribute store. Again, right out front. So you got a little advertisement right there. All right, let's head over here and talk about some things. So Universal's cutting Labby the Cabby. He's no longer gonna be a meet and greet character. Now I used to pride Universal with being different than Disney. I'm having these face characters. Cause as you know, Disney cut all citizens, all the citizens of Main Street, everyone. They budget cut at entertainment and they just went the cheap route and went with just the costume characters. Cause it's cheaper to pay a costume character than it is a face character. Cabby is one of my favorite things about Universal Studios. You come in, he's always there with a great smile 
smile, he's able to help guests. It kind of sets the tone for the day that you're gonna have fun because you have Cabby waving at you, telling you some funny jokes. Uh, now like Cabby's like theme park royalty and for them to cut that character is so frustrating. Look, I get it. Universal has to pay for Epic Universe. Cutting these characters, everybody's like, oh, they'll bring back these characters. No, they're not. It's the same Disney thing. Once they're gone, they don't bring them back. As I was showing in the Universal Studios Hollywood video, just how fun and important those face characters were to kind of building that atmosphere and vibe. Because you're just overwhelmed with all these fun characters, and it's a great experience. And it makes you want to keep coming back for more. I know it seems crazy that I might do a silly thing, but I'm not above doing silly things to make sure people are grinning. For example, if you saw your face right now, I'm, I'm, you're smiling. I'm smiling. Yeah, yeah. See what I'm saying? Mission accomplished. By Universal budget cutting Cabby, you're just like Disney. No longer special because Cabby was the last original non IP like face character that does meet and greet. They cut the characters over at Islands, they budget cutted the characters over at Jurassic. Universal has money and they're just cutting these characters, which is going to hurt them in the long run. Because Universal really like stood up while Disney sat down for a couple years to build something special and unique and they had it. And that's why everybody kind of flocked to Universal and they switched sides to come to Universal because Universal was doing something different. I'm excited for the parade coming. Hopefully, Cabby can go over there or something. I feel like he'd be good Quint. We know like the orc is gonna be in the parade, so I feel like cast Cabby as Quint, put him on the Jaws float, keep him within the park, but you're still gonna be missing that kind of back and forth improv that actor is so talented with. So let me know down in the comments, what are your thoughts about Universal Studios budget cutting Cabby to help pay for uh, Epic Universe? So everything was planned for Epic Universe before 2020. Everything was kind of budgeted, they had it all planned out. Then 2020 happened, and then the cost of labor, the cost of materials, everything skyrocketed in price. So they've had to budget cut stuff. So the budget they had planned and set aside for Epic, drastically different than what it's costing now. So they are having to budget cut. Epic's gonna be great and amazing, but it just sucks that stuff like this is happening. Because like, it's more than just a character being cut. It's like, Cabby has worked so long to make that character special and unique. I'm happy Universal Hollywood still has New York citizens and the face characters. Cabby's like part of the family. That's kind of like when you mess with the family, it's like you kind of mess like with all of us. Annual pass holders, let Universal know. Let them know how much you love this character. Tweet at Universal. Let them know how much you love Cabby. And wait! Why are we trying to save the Cabby? Why not me? Because I know you're safe. That's the thing. Do we? I, I do. You're, you're good. You're good to go. You're not sure because Paul Bunyan's running out there. Accent everything! I'm just going to miss seeing him every single day, like walking in. It's such a great experience talking to him. But he'll be around for a little longer. He's not going away immediately, but there is an end date. One of the most frustrating things for me and for you guys is you're not going to hear another content creator talk about this whatsoever because they want to keep getting their free cupcakes, right? They want to keep getting, you know, all their little coins for Epic Universe. If you had more content creators talk about things that are wrong between all of us, that there would be massive change. I just feel like I always have to be the bad guy. Our content creators just come on, step up. Like the internet just feels like two alternate realities. It's like everybody's off in la la land. And like for me, I care so much about the team members and the cast members because like I'm friends with so many of them, right? I work for the theme parks for so long. So like I know the struggle. I just wish more content creators would speak up and just stop like just not saying anything. They are surely working on the nighttime show. Let's do the whole montage. Remember the last video over by the Fear Factor stage? We saw those crates and boxes. That's the box and crate right there. It looks like whatever this was, because this was not here last time I saw it. Again, nighttime show. I think June is still what I'm hearing with the parade. I know Universe was starting to look at different actors for being cast for the parade. And then Epic Universe uh, performers had callbacks, I think, last week. Uh, they do have Shrek meeting right now. Now Lush Soap Company, am I saying that correctly? They launched a Shrek soap line. It is time to enter your swamp era because Lush have launched a collaboration with Shrek and like onions this collection has layers. First up we have the Shrek bath bomb which will turn your bath from a spa to a swamp. Of course there's cute little Jinji. He is a bubble bar and he smells sweet and delicious. I love the donkey one. I personally think he smells the best as he smells like morning waffles. There's the get out of my swamp slime which will add decadence to showers. They've repackaged 
and their classic face masks as a Shrek theme, but watch out, it's just veggie, not vegan. And of course, there are a few Fiona products too. There's a nice fruity springtime shower gel and also the most gorgeous body spray. The packaging alone is stunning. It's another fruity fragrance, which is nice, but a bit overwhelming for me. But yeah, get out of my swamp and into Lush to Shrek out this new collab. So the big announcement that Universal had today uh, was for the How to Train Your Dragon land coming to Epic Universe. They did a fun little uh, fly through of the land. <laughs> Bumblebee tacos goes all the way back to Canada. So let's talk about HHN tickets. Um, I believe next week is gonna be our first teaser announcement. I don't think it's a full commercial. Uh, when it comes to tickets, right? When I was at Universal Studios Hollywood, I renewed my annual pass and they were pretty much just like, remember when you get your HHN ticket, you have to make a reservation. If you have the top tier annual pass, you used to just be able to like show up whenever within certain dates and then redeem your free Halloween Horror Nights ticket. But now this year, you're gonna need to have a reservation for your Halloween Horror Nights ticket with your top tier annual pass. So will reservations be coming to all tickets? I don't think so. It was just like yesterday, we were waiting here for the Chucky house. Now speaking of Chucky, they're gonna be working on a fourth season, but they're also working on a new film. Okay, of course, over by the Ghostbusters Firehouse, we gotta talk about a bunch of Ghostbusters news. Trick or Treat Studios is releasing a whole new collection of Ghostbusters stuff. Do you want to be troubled by strange noises in the middle of the night? Do you want to experience feelings of dread in your basement or attic? Do you or any of your family want to see a spook, specter, or ghost? If the answer is yes, then don't wait another minute. Get on your computer and contact the professionals. Trick or Treat Studios. Our courteous and efficient staff is ready for your order 24 hours a day to serve all of your supernatural decorating needs. Shop masks, wall breakers, signs, and more from the Ghostbusters collection at trickortreatstudios.com or wherever our products are sold. How good does that Slimer look, popping out of the wall? Sometimes with the Slimer sculpts, I'm not a fan of them. I feel like this sculpt of Slimer looks a lot like the original Ghostbusters. And then also, there was a bunch of behind the scenes photos of Slimer from uh, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. That's just how I'm gonna visualize the scare actors who are Slimer in the Frozen Empire house just asked. Then Hallmark is having a Ghostbusters ornament this year. It's so good. It's a Stay Puft Marshmallow Man trying to climb up and they're burning him. Regal Cinemas just teased popcorn buckets coming for Beetlejuice 2. So it says, wait till you see our collectibles, collectibles rising this September at Regal. It kind of looks like Beetlejuice's grave and maybe a sandworm as a popcorn bucket. That thing looks awesome. And then also uh, a little update about HHN Hollywood. Murdy responded to some more tweets. Do you still have to write 
for the tram and RIP or are they done? Marty responds with, I'm done with the outline for the tram now, but still have to write it. Same with RIP. RIP kind of has exclusive experiences out there. And then also someone asked, have you gotten to the scare zones yet? And can we expect a new scare zone in the lower lot? He said, yes, scare zones are in progress. Still understand these budget cuts. Like the fact that maps, are gone forever. If you wanna make money? Get Bitters Boy out of here. Bring in a new mixologist who knows how to make a drink and you'll make so much money with actual drinkable drinks. Alcohol, the profit margins are insane on it. You make money, you keep cabbie. I am Universal's number one fan, right? When I see stuff like this, I just think, what are you doing? You're doing so good. Keep your foot on the pedal and you're gonna crush Disney. But they're letting off the pedal. On that note, let's go, let's go off the city walk. I know we were talking about that little uh, piece of fabric that was hanging off of Spider-Man's. They've, um, they've clipped it. All right, let's pop in the Universal Studio store here at City Walk. See if there's any merchandise. Now they used to have a package pickup service and a sign here, but I don't think they do package pickup here anymore. You could buy stuff within the park and then like pick it up here, but I think it's gone. We got the classic, the Universal Neon. We got like the University design. You have the Amity Island, Shark Tours, Jurassic Park, Universal Studios with all the Seuss characters. My other ride is a time machine with the DeLorean right there and then minion power. So you're looking at $14 for these magnets. These are $40 copies of some of the Harry Potter books. This is Prisoner of Azkaban. This is pretty cool because like, it's like all these little interactive uh, like pop out elements throughout the entire book. That's cool. It's always crazy how like these books have kind of evolved with different covers and then different interactive elements. Now they do have some of the classic designs, but over here, these are interesting. So it's a bookmark and a little pen, but of the character's wand. I had nothing new at the Epic Universe Preview Center here at Universal City Walk, but let's go over all the info that Universal dropped today about the How to Train Your Dragon Land. When you walk through the portal into the Isle of Burke, you're introduced to a sweeping view of the island itself, almost right out of the movies. And that shot, in my opinion, is actually one of the best in the park. You are no longer a family unit. You are Vikings. This is Burke. How to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke takes place between the second and third movies. We call it Burke 2.5. This is the golden age of harmony between Vikings and dragons. You'll be able to see some of your favorite characters. You'll be able to see dragons walking around and all the color of the dragons has been infused throughout our land, in the buildings and the attractions. Speaking with DreamWorks and some of the art directors, they were the ones who really instilled in us the vision of this world of Burke. Okay, so now let's talk about all the announcements that Universal released for the How to Train Your Dragons, Isles of Burkland. Take to the skies and soar with dragons as you explore the colorful Viking village at the heart of the How to Train Your Dragons, Isle of Burke. It's a heartwarming and exhilarating adventure for all ages. The first attraction we're gonna be talking about, take flight on Hiccup's wing gliders. From Hiccup's workshop comes his latest contraption, a winged flying machine that launches aspiring dragon riders into the air, swooping and soaring and encountering Hiccup and Toothless along the way. Get ready to board Hiccup's wing gliders, a fun coaster that invites Vikings to prove they're brave enough to speed through the skies with dragons. Okay, so now let's talk about the stage show that, that's gonna be there. So a dragon studded live spectacular. When a new dragon shows up on the Isles of Burke, the Vikings think they may have finally met their match. Hiccup and Toothless, with help from Gobbler and Astrid, work together to solve the mystery of the untrainable dragon. Experience the wonder of dragons on stage and soaring overhead in the spectacular music filled heartwarming live show. And actually gonna have a meet and greet there. Say hello to Hiccup, Toothless, and friends. Meet Burke's best known dragon and viking. Honor the bond between dragon and viking at the Haddock Paddock, where you'll get to meet and pose for photos with the heroic Hiccup and the friendly Night Fury dragon. And now let's talk about the Dragon Racers Rally. This is another attraction they're gonna be having there. And to be a champion dragon racer. The sport of dragon racing is a celebrated pastime on the Isle of Burke at Dragon Racers Rally. Burke's new vikings can practice aerobatic, maneuvers, high speed barrel rolls on a Viking made dragon riding trainer. You'll need these high flying, gravity defying, swooping and soaring skills if you hope to become a champion dragon racer. And then another attraction is gonna be called Fire Drill. It's a soak or be soaked sea battle. With fire breathing dragons everywhere, villagers have to be prepared. Viking twins Rough Nut and Tough Nut have transformed Burke's Fire School into a watery, interactive boat battle at sea. Board your ship in Fire Drill and blast your water cannons at flame-like targets and the occupants of every other boat 
boat to outsoak other Vikings. Then there's gonna be the Viking training camp. It's never been more fun to be a Viking. At Viking training camp, junior Vikings will discover all types of dragons in the sprawling, colorful, interactive play area. Adventures will include multiple towers to climb and explore, a fun agility course, Viking drums, and chimes to play, an interactive sheep launching game, plus slides and activities for young Vikings. And the main place to eat is gonna be called the Mead Hall. Gather around for a Viking feast. Here's the place to eat and drink like a Viking, the massive Mead Hall, Burke's main gathering place, a grand chamber from Mountain Rock, where Vikings feast on a hearty menu, including meat, fish, sandwiches, and desserts. Beverages include assorted meads, ciders, and ales, so they're gonna have some alcohol there. And then, uh, if you wanna buy some of the merchandise right now, you can go online or in the annual pass holder gift shop at Islands of Adventure, and they're selling a Isle of Burke ringer t-shirt for $30, and then they also have a Isle of Burke pendant for 16, or a mug for 15, and then a How to Train Your Dragon youth shirt, 25. So we're gonna have a lot more information coming up, but for right now, that is what Universal released. Okay, welcome back. Now, Disney had a response. They announced they're doing new wraps on the bus. All right, so on that note, let's go back to the office and we will talk about the Halloween Horror Nights original house rumored to be coming this year. Okay guys, we are back in the office now. Let's talk about the first rumored Halloween Horror Nights 2024 original house. So I keep hearing about this house over and over and over again from everybody that I'm kind of talking to. And uh, I'm about like 75% sure that this house is actually gonna be coming. And last year, we had a wonderful list of kind of original houses. The fan favorite house from last year was the Dueling Dragons house. Now the team kind of always listens to how people respond to certain different houses. Now the Dueling Dragons house was based off a attraction that used to be at Island of adventure and there's another attraction that just recently closed and that everybody kind of loved Poseidon's Fury I'm hearing that Poseidon's Fury is probably gonna be coming as an original house to Halloween Hornets this year now as you know the teams always love to hide little breadcrumbs for upcoming different houses and everything within the tribute store and again in that final room there's a uh, Easter egg hidden right there right in front of our face all right so you come over here this is gonna be the trident right from Poseidon's Fury now we talked about this in the first video where we went over every single thing within here again they always hide the clues here again it's just so early in the season that things do change all the time but I'm pretty sure we're gonna be getting a Poseidon's Fury house on that note if you enjoyed this video make sure to hit that like button if you have not already hit the subscribe button join the family I love, I love the, the family because I'm gonna keep you up to date on all things Universal Studios and Halloween Horror Nights around the country I love you all and I'll see y'all very soon be ready to wear yellow hey, no, no, no.